What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Age of Quarantine. My name is Chris Enriquez. I am your host tonight, and I uh, can be followed at Chris Enriquez Drums. I play in the band Spotlights, which is at Spotlights Music, and I work at Revolver Magazine at Revolver Mag. I also um, just want to say thank you to my friends at St. Vitus for letting me do this web series on their um, Instagram, which is now, I think, on week five or week six. It's really crazy. Um, but uh, that being said, we've had some amazing, amazing guests. I am really excited about tonight's guest. Uh, not only is she somebody that I became uh, friends with recently because we started playing music together, which we'll get into, but um, she also plays in one of my favorite bands, Kailessa, which, well, she did play in Kailessa. We'll get to that. And then she also plays in a band called The Discussion, which we'll also talk about. Um, but I knew her as the front person and the guitar player from Kailessa, who I uh, played a couple shows with and saw over the years. Huge fan. That's what you hear in the background. Laura Pleasance, man. She is just somebody that I think um, just really, like, did so much uh, for, you know, whatever kind of music you want to call it, but she's been doing it for so long, man, and um, it's cool to see the genre, uh, whatever you want to call it, doom metal or, you know, where it is today, but I don't think it would be where it is without Kyleso's contribution, because they were really doing some exciting stuff uh, before the explosion really happened, and um, I, can't, I can't wait to talk to her and get into detail about uh, her past getting into music and, and how, um, how she's gotten to where she is today. Now, I think that I saw Laura watching. Now, I just am waiting to see if I get her um, request to join. Actually, I'm going to send her one and see if it works now. All right. I think it's yeah, working. hey. Technology. Yeah. What's up? Hey, what's up? Nothing much, you know, doing my thing, my regular um, daily web series. Thanks for being I a part. I know. It's awesome. I watched last night um, after the fact, but I was able to catch it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, and um, it's just good to see your face, and uh, you were the last person I saw, or the last person I socialized with before I got stuck home, so. Um, I know, that's, that's crazy. You guys got it really bad up there. Unfortunately, but I'm glad that the last thing I did was play music. Uh, yeah. You, totally. so, um, you know. um, let me ask you, though, how, how has it been uh, so far since you've been at home dealing with the pandemic, um, you know, how have you been managing? It's weird. It's super weird, but you know, it's, it's not like where you are. Um, but it's, you know, it's weird. Um, luckily we've had really, really nice weather. It's generally, it, it, it can, it can be really hot this time of year. Um, but it, we've had an amazing spring. So I've been able to spend some time outside um because the weather has been great so that's been cool um i've just been working and um i'm kind of i'm, I'm good at being a loner so it, it's like not that big of a deal to me yeah yeah same <laughs> i think uh and, and and also if anyone follows you you've been taking full advantage of the uh beautiful nature around you and you always take these beautiful photographs so thanks for sharing that with everybody because they're, they're fun to look at um i uh i, I want to use the opportunity tonight which i've been doing on the episodes to get to know our guests and some of our favorite musicians and uh you know kind of just focusing on on some of the positive stuff while we're going through this crazy time so if it's cool i, I wanted to kind of delve into your history as a musician how you got started Oh, looks like we lost you. Let's try that again. No worries. This happens. Technology, man. Oh, and everybody watching, um, you can um, send us questions by using the question mark box on the bottom of the screen, um, and then I'll eventually get to it. That's the easiest way for us to get to the questions. Otherwise, the uh, comments just really hard to um to keep up with all right hey it's right next to my router that's so lame no worries no worries in <laughs> fact 
I, I used the opportunity to tell everyone that if they had questions, that they could submit questions on the bottom of the screen with the question yeah. box. But uh, yeah, I was saying, I just want to um, kind of delve into your history and, and how you uh, got involved with music and, and starting with like, where are you originally from? I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. And then um, as far as just like getting into music period before you even started playing, like what are your earliest memories of just getting into music? Um, I don't remember tons of music in my house as a very young child, um, except my mom would play music. And um, she was really into, she'd play radio. So I'd hear some of the first stuff I fell in love with was like New Wave. Um, but she was really into Motown. Um, so I listened to a lot of Motown as a little kid and loved it, like really loved it. And yeah. then I guess the first big, big record I heard was um, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Okay. I mean, that, you know. That's one of my <laughs> earliest memories, like hearing that and Prince. I love that. And, you know, Prince is an underrated guitar player, man. What's that? He's, uh, Prince is, uh, like, I mean, people know what a good guitar player he is, but I feel like it goes so, like, under the radar. I mean, he's... Oh, he's... A, I remember my friend, Emmy, we were friends since we were, like, six. She, she had... I don't know how old we were, or little, but she had one of those, like, Fisher-Price record players that you, growing up... Uh, I mean, this is probably, this is, you know, dates me, early 80s, you have for price record players, and you'd listen to little plastic fives on them, and you would follow them on, um, in like a book and read a book or something. So she had one of those, and she had, uh, she had a couple older brothers, so she had the uh, Raspberry Beret 45, Okay. she used to play that over and over, and like jump on her bed. That's awesome. I'm not surprised to hear that New Wave and uh, Michael Jackson and all that stuff played some role in your uh, musical development because you've always had melody and um, even in the heavy stuff that that, uh, that we're all used to uh, hearing from Kyle Lessa, like there was always some like some some melody in there and and, and something that was not just regular melody either. I've always loved melody, um, but then as I got older um, and you know discovered my own music um that w it wasn't just like around playing um i fell in love with like aggressive music and that is directly from listening to or watching mtv and listening to and watching headbangers ball and being like you know a kid of the age like your eyes are glued to the television and um i didn't have any older brothers or anything so we were just we we just had to find stuff on our own. Um, so I think uh, I was really, really into Guns N' Roses. Right, right. And like Metallica, I saw the video for one. And I remember thinking, <laughs> oh, it's, it's black and white and it's dark. And I don't really understand it, but whatever it is, I like it a lot. Right. That was such an important video for. It was so important, yeah. But also, like, um, you know, I, I much like you, I have the same story. It's like, and those particular bands that you mentioned were so instrumental, I think, in opening doors. Um, and like that Metallica video, though, was so powerful, though, because, like you said, it was there wasn't really anything else out there like that, and and like. If anyone watching, which hopefully most of you have seen the video for one, I know that MTV doesn't play videos, but like it's black and white and it's like this guy that's like dying because like he walked into a mine and like that's just as important to the video as the music is so dark, you know. It's dark. Yeah. Art. And I had you know, and I was used to seeing, you know, whatever was played on MTV all the time. Right. Um nothing so dark but um so i got into that and then also i as i got a little older in middle school or while i was in middle school i i 
I was like messing around in the attic and I found my, all of my mom's records. And so I dragged them out and then my grandmother got me a record player for Christmas, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's 120 minutes as well, but I, I <laughs> was horribly aggressive to and it, it couldn't be too soft at that time. Right. Um, uh, but I got my, my mom's record collection and then I got a record player and she had a ton of, uh, like Motown. She also had a ton of seventies rock. So, and then stuff from the sixties. So it was like all the Beatles records, um, some folk stuff, like all the Rolling Stone records, Rolling Stones records, um, Zeppelin, Donovan, um, just stuff like that. So I, I, I heavily got into Led Zeppelin too. Yeah. Um, that's a lot, that's, that's a lot of great stuff to be exposed to. And, um, and we were really lucky during that generation that it was also like available to us the way that it was, like you said, um, that was actually one of my questions that I was going to ask you was how you got into, um, you know, the heavier side of things. And I want to delve more into that, but what came first though? What, what did you learn how to play? your instruments and start singing before you start discovering all that stuff uh, or did it come after the fact? It came after. Um, I begged and begged for a guitar for maybe three years before I finally got one. And I don't think I got one until I was uh, 15 or so. Okay. Um, and were you self-taught? I can't remember if I could drive yet or not, but it was I was 15. And by then, my favorite band ever was Black Sabbath. And I was like obsessed with Black Sabbath. And um, I had discovered the Melvins. I had discovered, of course, there was the whole grunge stuff, which I was totally into too, because that was, um, hit me at like the right age, at a good age for that. But while I was into all of that, I was still, I was into like Pantera and Tool. Um, but I couldn't quite grasp because I was going, it had to be super aggressive. I couldn't quite get into bands that I would later love, like Teenage Fan Club okay. or The Cure or, um, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, more obscure stuff, I guess you could say, for like if you were into grunge, if you were going to do a deep dive, you'd get into like Teenage Fan Club, like you mentioned. Stuff yeah, like that. for um being part of back then you could be a part of like a cd club it was like for a penny or there was like some thing where you could just get a bunch of cds or and then a month and then for some i don't know some club and i remember getting a teenage fan club uh cd as a one which is awesome and i got it and i was like nah i don't this, <laughs> I, I don't understand this um, yeah yeah but well, i it was just over my head at the time. I mean, I was I was still kind of a kid, but yeah. So by the time I got a guitar, I was really into Sabbath, and also by then I had discovered Black Flag, and uh, Fugazi, and Minor Threat, and The Misfits, and Danzig, because Danzig was big. Um, yeah. In the nineties, he, he had a regular. Yeah, he was regularly on. Uh on MTV and Headbangers Ball. Those are those are just such great, diverse yeah, uh, right. things to get into. Yeah, and yes, Columbia House and okay. B. Those are the ones. Um, were you self-taught or did you get uh, some guitar lessons? I got a few lessons, but all I wanted to, I didn't care about, you know, this, I had this teacher who was, who got me into like Mavish New Orchestra and John McLaughlin and, and I really liked that but at the same time i was like i just want to play iron man <laughs> right I don't, care, I don't care about anything else just teach me the power chord teach me how to play these songs and he was like okay and so i like dabbled in theory for a second and i was like no i don't care i just want to play these power chords and so i you know i was learning like sabbath songs and um you know, and then like the stuff that they teach you right away, like which is like House of the Rising Sun and and that kind of thing. But the first song I ever learned was uh, Iron Man. Yeah, it's always Iron Man or um, or Smoke, or smoke on, on the Water. 
right? Yeah. You know, those my, are my two very easy, water. good beginner, beginner riffs that are great. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so funny. I mean, I'm just thinking, I don't want to go off tangent, but like, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but it's like, I remember the first feeling of like, when you realize that, it, that a power chord is what it is, and you're like, holy shit, I can do it. And it just opens up this like crazy door of endless possibilities. And I guess that's how you turn into um, the person that you are today. <laughs> well, I just, I loved how heavy Sabbath was and it also had a groove and also had a melodic side and their song structures are so interesting. And it, it just had a, a lot of feeling to it. And I remember I didn't have an amp, but I had this electric guitar and um, I had one of those, they had like those, um, it was a nice one. It was like a JVC, but it was a compact stereo system. And somehow you could, I can't remember how I did it, but I just plugged my guitar into it and I could use the receiver somehow as, as like an amp. And then it would just play through the speakers and it was super distorted because, I mean, it sounded like shit, but it was amplified. So I just remember I called my friend on the phone. I was like, oh my God. I just learned how to play Iron Man. I was like, listen. <laughs> nah, nah. That's amazing. Yeah. I um and, and then as far as like finding your voice, right? Like when 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 did you start singing? Um, way later. I, I wasn't ever really interested in singing until later. I was in um uh I guess it would be my second band. We were just like a a fast punk band called the mugshots nice nice <laughs> i sang backups in that band and then um i sang lead on one of the songs um that and we recorded that um we made a cd okay and that's that was like my debut in singing and then it wasn't until kyla so that i sang we we um we didn't want a front person. We just wanted to all sing. Um, so I just kind of figured it out as we went. Um, okay. Not really knowing what to, how to do it. or. Sometimes that's the best way, right? I guess when you just sort of dive in and then the pressure is on and you have to kind of just, um, and, and there's an audience, like your bandmates are your audience. You're just like, I, I, I don't want to blow it, you know? And um you know, we'll get into Kylesna, obviously, but I'm still kind of uh, focused on like how you came to be uh, as um, just to, as a musician and all that. Like, when uh, when did you start going out and discovering your local scene, and what were some of the um, you know obviously we're on the Saint Vitus uh, page right now. What were your Saint Vituses growing up that you would go to and frequent, and who were the? Uh, uh, local I'm from Greensboro. I mean, there wasn't anything, uh, right. you know, and. I had a curfew, I didn't have a car. Uh, so I had to rely on going out with friends who didn't have a curfew and had cars. Um, so I was able to see some stuff. There were a few places that they let you in underage. Um, and I'd see some local band play, you know, not more any good, um, but it was cool to see. Um, I was just happy to see live music. And um, let's see, I went, a little later, I went to, I started going to house shows. Uh, when I was like 17, um, I went to a few house shows and played bass for a band for one summer. Um, uh, but I do remember seeing, there was this place called Somewhere Else Tavern and it was like way down this one road and my friend had the car. We went to see the show. Um, Buzz Oven was, was Buzz Oven. And uh, oh, wow. I want to say Logical Nonsense. Okay. And I I guess I was 16 because she, she, she could drive. Um, but they like, and I knew of Buzz Oven just because they were from North Carolina and they were heavy. And they had this record. Uh, it was right when um, the Roadrunner record came out, which was. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's the one with the crazy artwork on the cover. Right. It's not to a frown. It's the one after that. Um, 
but it's dark. And uh, I remember seeing them, like, they didn't show up at four in the morning and we watched them play. It was like 10 people there and it was a gnarly shit <laughs> of all. Of some, yeah, sore, that record. I love that record. And it, it was just the gnarly shit I'd ever seen. I was like, it kind of blew my mind because I was like, it's like punk, but with Sabbathy right. riffs or something. And, and I just like, my brain exploded. And, um, and they were kind of scary looking too. So that added to the mystique. Um, that I saw, and then, and then I saw that maybe before that, I think my first show was Danzig. Wow, what a fucking awesome first show, huh? Yeah, and that was at a club. Um, I had to go to Raleigh. They didn't play Greensboro, so I went to Raleigh. I like, begged my mom to go with these two guys. And one of them <laughs> like Dave Mustaine. Like, trench coat. <laughs> Just looked like Dave Mustaine. And the other guy was like this kind of sketchy dude. They were both really nice. and But he had like love, hate tattooed on his <laughs> knuckles. And my mom was like, mm. Right, right. She said, do not drink. And we're like, yes, ma'am. And life has never been the same ever since then. And it was awesome. They were so good. It was so loud. My, my ears rang for like three days. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. What a great way to get started. Um, and then as far as, um, like, when, did, when, when, are you, when were you like, I want to participate? I want to be in a band. I want to do this now. Definitely in high school, but I didn't find anyone um, who, I, I wasn't very good, number one. I wasn't very good because I was just learning. Um, and all the guys that I knew who played were into, like, Grateful Dead and shit. And I, I like, wasn't interested in that. So... It wasn't until I went off to college, or I did play one summer, the summer before I went to college. Um, I played bass for a band, um, but um, I mean, I, I I wanted to be in a band like as soon as I had a guitar. I mean, I right, just right. like okay, I'm gonna go to college, and while I'm there, I'm gonna get a band going. And that was like those were like my goals. So, um, so yeah, you it wasn't until I moved to Savannah that I started really playing with other people. Okay. What, uh, what brought you to, uh, Savannah? The Savannah college of art and design. Okay. Okay. So and I, there, I went there. Where you kind of met, started meeting, uh, the, the folks that would eventually come and form Kai Lesser. Yeah. I met, you know, Savannah Small, and back then, I kind of caught the tail end of, like, the crazy years of this town. Um, so it was pretty wild, and the punk scene was small, but it existed. And I was just really into, like, the, I was really into, like, okay, I'm going to art school, there's these artists everywhere. So I was just really into, like, doing art, meeting new people. Of from all like all kinds of creative people, um, and I was then and I I also really discovered like like I was really getting into punk. Like, yeah. Um. So you know I I definitely I had like a mohawk and like oh you went there <laughs> oh yeah I was super punk okay I love that yeah, yeah. my uh, my 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 co-host to. Uh, you know, Dave, he actually has some old photos of himself back in those days. And it's funny how we all sort of evolved because he was very much into that fashion. I was more hardcore. Um, so everyone kind of like has had their their moments, I guess, where they went. Yeah, through. I was like really into 77 punk. Um, and and just I was into all sorts of music, but I really, really liked the anti anti authority uh like lyrics of like the punk bands and the speed and i just like the simple some of my favorite bands are just simple punk bands yeah it's no like, absolutely they're like simple, straight straightforward catchy um all the guitar tones from you know were just so weird and out there it's not over a lot of that stuff isn't overproduced uh never got into screwdriver <laughs> Definitely not screwdriver, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, let's, I said yes. Mastodon is good, not screwdriver, dude. <laughs> no, 
man. Although there used to be the argument, but it's so good. And it's like, whatever. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah. I see that it's, there's like, um, I don't think that, I don't think you can see this at the receiving end, but I see the, the question box is filling up. I'm going to get to everyone's questions eventually. I, I want to start getting into uh, Kylesa before I start taking those questions. Yeah, because it's, it's like 830. And this thing yeah. cuts off after an hour, I think. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, so I try to keep an eye on the time. But let's 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 get into it, though. So, so how did Kailesa come to be? So, I was friends with Philip and Brian of that band. Um, they were older than me, but they used to book. They were, so they were in this band, Damn It. Okay. And they were like the shit, and they played Savannah a good bit. And they also booked all the underground, like punk crush shows and metal and whatever, you know, they were booking a lot from cool bands from California. And, um, and I just became friends with, with those guys, you know, just from seeing right. them going to shows and being them around. And um, I became really, really good friends with Philip. So, um, you know, I had been through some bands and they were doing their thing. But then at, at some point they decided they were going to break up. And that's when he, uh, Brian came to me and were like, hey, we're going to start this new band. Do you want to be in the band? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, totally. Because I, I was actively looking for serious people to be in a band with. And I was just going to school and I was focusing on that, but I, I really wanted to find serious play, people to play with, but you know, it was like not a lot to choose from here. You know, it's a small town, small college town, and um, not everyone is into extreme shit. So. Um, it's very niche. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I, I we started I started Kailasa with those guys. Uh, basically, the all, all the the people from Dammit, the last lineup of Dammit minus Victoria, who um, at that time was uh, pregnant and like about to have a baby, and you know they broke up for whatever reason they did, and and I started with the other guys, and it was like boot camp at first yeah i was so green i had no idea what i was doing and you cut your teeth in that well that, that's you cutting your teeth and oh yeah definitely. yeah what what stylistically cutting my teeth uh, definitely. Right. and maybe the second record too so stylistically obviously it was kind of it was very diverse and and we talked about that a little earlier um you know i know coming uh your musical uh, um, upbringing you were you were talking about getting into so many different stuff did you guys like did you guys initially ever talk about what you wanted to sort of like how how you wanted to mix genres up and what you wanted the end result to be or was it organic where you just kind of went to the both, table and you wanted? both um it was mainly organic but we did have the conversation of hey we want to play down tuned heavy music, but without any genre limitation or any limitation. Like, it, you can go wherever you want with it if it works. So, that for me, that was great. That was a fantastic creative um, opportunity because, you know, I wasn't down tuning my guitar really, and I wasn't really into. I mean, we were into the same stuff, but, you know, like, I wasn't it as into Neurosis, like, as those guys right. were, for example. Um, but I was really getting into, um, like, Caven, Botch. And Hell Cold yeah. And, like, all of those bands um, that were, were doing this thing. And, um, and, and as those guys were, too. And... But we, you know, we, we're all just music lovers. So um, it was know, adventurous. Philip would turn me on to a lot of cool stuff because he, he, he was just into all kinds of cool stuff. And so we would just turn each other on to music, make mixtapes, and yeah. And it was kind of anything goes as as long as it worked and sounded cool. I love that. You know, it's uh, 
it's it's there's a lot of bands that are very narrow and and that's great sometimes you get the no frills metal band the no frills hardcore stuff but um then there are bands that are just musically adventurous sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it doesn't but um you you guys kept it fresh and you evolved a lot which i want to get into because you put out so many records and um you know naturally when you're doing something that adventurous it's gonna evolve and progress i'm gonna jump around a little bit but sure. you guys got the uh two when you started doing the two drummer thing i i don't i don't know if that was i mean there, uh, there have been a lot of bands that have done that before i don't know if that was before or during the time that like big business and melvin's were doing it it seemed like you guys did it a little before what was what was the uh how did that even come come together well I'll, I'll go through this pretty quickly um when we initially started we started the band we wanted to have two drummers i was jamming with this guy tyler and um he wanted to bring me and tyler on um it's funny because tyler was later in kailasa but uh at the time tyler was like not into it he didn't want to do it um he was just in a different phase in his life and didn't want to be in a band um so we're like okay that's cool we'll just go ahead with one drummer but when our when when 2005 came around and our second drummer this guy brandon when he quit uh we had been jamming with carl mcginley from on persons who are this really rad band like my favorite savannah band ever um but he was still in college he's a little younger than i am and he was like i can't tour or anything i'm in school but you know i can jam with you guys so we're jamming with him and then we were like trying out drummers and then it was phil that was like let's try to have two drummers now because carl then changed his mind and was like okay i can do it and then we had already tried out this other guy and it was like it was just a good time to try it because we had no drummer so right. <laughs> just went, from having no drummer to two drummers yeah it was cool yeah that was huge it was a huge uh it was an explosion just to watch from the uh, from the other end. Yeah, um, it really was powerful live. And when we put our minds to it, it, it really worked on record too. But um, harder to pull off on record. No, yeah. I don't know. There's there's pros and cons to there's pros to it being on the record, and there's pros to just being the powerful force that it is live. Right. Well, let me uh, let me get to some of the uh, fan questions. Um, I see that I have at least. I have, a, I have a bunch, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull them up and see. Okay, all right. Let's go with this one from Brian D. Sixteen. Does the word Kailessa mean anything? Yes, it is from an uh, a Buddhist term uh, that is spelled differently uh, called Kailessa Mara, and I think it's probably pronounced differently, but it basically means translates to uh, mean demons of defilement and things, actions, uh, anything that would hinder one from reaching a state of nirvana or completeness. So we thought it had a cool meaning and no one else was gonna have that band name. So it was, okay. it was, it was a cool band name, but also not a cool band name because people were like, what? What's your band, What's your band name? I love that name. I, I mean, I, shit. Like, I, I there's so many other band names that are harder to pronounce and understand. I've been in many of them, so I know. <laughs> so, uh, but um, I love that band name. Um, and it's one word. I think one word band names are the best. Um, okay, we got another one here. From... Thank you for the kind words, Mister. By the way, favorite and least favorite songs to perform live and why? Um... Frank Bosia. Thanks, man. Oh, favorite song. I don't know if I had like a favorite favorite. Um, I always really liked performing only one and I always really liked said and done live. And a lot of the faster, more riffier songs I thought were always just fun to play. Um, they weren't necessarily my favorite songs, but they were just fun to play um least favorite song to play live 
Man, well, there's so many songs. <laughs> there's a lot. There's so I mean, many songs, and there were so. I'm many gonna get there songs. because you have so many, um, so many records out. But uh, you, you did no pressure. Let's. Uh, I don't what know. Do we think about the one. Okay, um, I just have to filter through these because some of them <coughs> are. Let's try to go back. We're always fun. Definitely. Super fun. Oh, why don't we go here then? We will go tech. Can you talk about your favorite tunings and amp settings? October. Okay, song. that's kind of a loaded. That's a complicated. That's not a simple question to answer. But um, favorite tuning, I think, is drop C, um, because you get the best of both worlds in terms of um, frequency response. Uh, amp settings. It totally depends on the amp. It depends on the tuning. It depends on the room. It depends on the car. Um, but generally, I do like a lot of mid range. And I like a clean. I started, when I started with Kailas, I just used amp distortion and it was just gain all the way up. Just. But as I kind of refined my sound and learned more about tone, I, I backed off on a lot of the amp distortion and used a modern clean sound and got a bunch of my sounds through my paddle board um, so that the amp itself didn't color color the sound too much especially for the cleaner stuff like for all the trippy stuff i really wanted to have like a clean base to start to start with yeah well hopefully that answers your question man um we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on um on kailessa because we uh we'll, we certainly want to talk about the other band projects that you went on to do that you are doing today um but uh what, what was like a typical writing process like with the band that's just an interesting thing to ask is like it's just very adventurous you know I, I'm, I'm wondering if it was jams or someone would come in with something like what was that process? you know we, we really didn't have a huge formula and it depend on it depended on the record and the time period and the lineup um like early on it was a lot of just jamming late at night um and kind of cobbling riffs together and ideas um and we you know our whole thing too was like to not to, to try to not have a super typical song structure um because you know we we did like you know there we did like a lot of prog and, and and so forth but whereas prog can be can teeter on being too meandering and long-winded we, we wanted to try to rein that in and you know it took a while for us to figure it out but anyway it was a lot of jamming and then and then on i know on static tensions like i wrote a lot by myself and the phil wrote a lot by himself and we both brought songs and and then we collaborated a lot so it was kind of all of the above in terms of how the songs came about. Some were really easy to write, some were really difficult to finish. Um, All right. Yeah, this, no, that's, I, I just, was just curious because it's, uh, it is very, it's like a musical play when I'm listening to that stuff. It's great. I still love uh, listening to that stuff. Hey, during, um, during that time, obviously, I'm sure you had some like holy shit moments too because you did accomplish quite a bit. Are there any fond memories or moments that really stick out to you where you're like, damn, I can't believe I'm here now, you know, because you, you go from like starting out with your buddies and then you're like on this huge stage sharing. It yeah, I mean, there were a lot of amazing moments where it's just like, whoa. And there, there were a lot of moments that were like, whoa. <laughs> this <sucks. laughs> but there were a lot of really good moments. And I think one of the really, one of the really awesome moments was when we got with Torch. We used to tour Torch all the time. Um, so good. I felt like we either toured with High on Fire or we toured with Torch. <laughs> um, but we were with Torch in Europe and we all got flown to Athens, Greece in this little airplane. And we were like, oh, it was like our first fly in. And I guess that was 2009. Um, and we played this giant festival. And this like be beautiful mountainside, and then like like delicious food, and uh, 
we flew in and we were treated like royalty. And I was like, oh, well, this is awesome. And it was, we um, <laughs> played, it was Slipknot, Headlines, and then Macedon played and Down played. Fuck yeah. Torch opened the show and then we played after Torch. And then I think either Down or Macedon, I, I can't remember. But, um, it was it was awesome. And I met Phil Anselmo. I, I'd met him before, I think, but it was like his 40th birthday. So we were just, that, it was just super fun. It was awesome. Right. What a moment. That's that's awesome. Was, I love that. I was like, and, and it was beautiful. And when um and and when we played, it was like everyone at this festival was just like freaking out. <laughs> and and like everyone was. It was just like, oh wow, they, they love metal here. Awesome. That's rad. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So it it. Was, that was like a, a, a big highlight. Well, so we'll 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 move we'll move on um, and and start talking about the other stuff because uh, oh, like with, I wanted uh, to shout out to Burnt Ramen, Davey. Burnt Ramen was one of my favorite places in the United States to play. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, do, do, do you think? Um, well, briefly, what uh, do you want to just talk about? Like, how, why, um, you know, how the band ended, and and do you think we'll ever see the band come back again? So the band ended because basically we were tired of doing it. Okay. Easy. Um, and it was just difficult and it was like a bunch of stuff happened at once. And we were like, you know what, let's just, I, I was, I was over it and we were all kind of over it. And, um, I, I got, I, I, I wanted to take a break from heavy music. I wanted to write this other stuff. Um, and I knew it wouldn't really work with Kyla. So, and I just, I just got tired of it. You know, we toured, yeah. we were, worked so heavily for so long and like it's super hard to, it's really hard to make a living doing that especially when you keep your integrity and you and you still write weird music that isn't gonna necessarily belong on a major label right so i just wanted to do something else i was tired of it and and then uh i had i just started writing immediately and took my time because you know i like i bought a house and i was like renovating this house and like you know life stuff happens and right. you know, i just wasn't doing the band anymore um but i really miss playing music so i started i started writing um really in 2016 and then got enough to report an EP and this guy in town who was a drummer and a, a SCAD student getting his master's degree in sound so he could get us into the studio there. And so over one summer, I guess it was the summer of 2017, we recorded this EP and it, and Trey, it was like, we could go in there once a week and record. And then I think I had to like teach some, I had to like, uh, the trade-off was like going into this one class and classroom and uh, kind of giving these students just some studio tips and that sort of thing. So it took forever to record the EP because we only had one, one day a week. And then I did a lot of it at my house. But, and this is, by the way, the discussion, right? This is the discussion. Right. right. So Kailas was done. I wanted to make that clear. I wanted to come up with bands. It is a solo project, but it's called The Discussion. And then we we recorded this EP. It's basically me and the drummer recorded this EP. And uh, we want, I wanted to go to Europe because I hadn't been in a while, and I'd spent so much time in Europe. And my boyfriend had never been to Europe, so we just went to Europe. And I booked the whole tour myself. And no one had heard it, and I was like, "Well, it's very different than Kailasa, but it doesn't suck." <laughs> just trust me it'll be cool and so i i was able to like cobble this tour together which was like half tour half vacation and it was amazing it was you know yeah fun. of course I mean, you're it was like i always that. wanted to tour that way i probably will never tour that way again but it was amazing like life life uh good great life memory um doing that first first and only discussion tour I hope to do, I hope to get, I, I'm, I've got a new single out now, which you can find on Bandcamp. 
And um, I actually want to just say this real quick. Um, so they're waiving all the band camp fees on Friday. And I've got a pre-order up for the seven inch that I'm, I'm putting out myself. And I'm going to put up the other two songs on the seven inch on Friday. And that's limited to like 300 copies. And then also on Friday, I'm going to put up um, pre-orders for the CD EP I did a couple years ago, but I never, it was only it was a CD only release. So I'm going to, I'm putting it out on vinyl. Um, Fuck yeah. And I've already put it, I, I've already gotten the test pressing for it. I'm just like waiting on them, but um, I, I haven't told anyone about it yet. So if you like the CD EP, I'm putting it on vinyl and I'm going to put pre-orders up on Bandcamp on Friday. Awesome. Yeah, guys, pick that up. That's awesome. I'm excited. And, and, and just to go back to that story, like how rewarding that must be to like come out of uh, a band that's been doing it for like, what, six, 15, 16 years? Like 15 and, years, close, close to 15 years. Yeah, 15 years, a shit ton of records, EPs. And then to start over again, that's 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 very rewarding. And so I got to give you mad props. And, and the band is uh, fantastic. Um, I love what I've heard, which you uh, showed me um, when we first met. And, um, you know, somebody here had a question that you may have answered already about the discussion. Uh, well, there you go. It's right here. Any plans for the discussion future releases? I think you uh, kind of yes. talked about that. Yeah. Check out Bandcamp on Friday. Um, there's pre there'll be pre-orders up. Um, and I'm currently working on, a, like, a new EP. So, like, four or five minutes. That's great. And I'm sure even though we're in a pandemic, you can spend, you know, it's a solo project. So probably affording you some time to write and, and come up with stuff, which is, uh, you know, one of the benefits. Um, Definitely. We got, we had a couple of questions here that uh, pertain to uh, what we were working on together. So let's see um, where, which one we should pick here. Okay, here we go. Who's this guy? John Hill. No, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but. How about the collaboration with Julie Christmas? What's going on with that? Still on? Are you still on for Roadburns 2021? Unless the zombie apocalypse comes, which it might. So, you know, I hope so. I think it's I, on. It's, I hope it's, so. It's kind of a long ways away. Yeah, yeah. We could yeah, all be dead by then. For any of you guys watching, me and um, Laura are actually in that project together, which is kind of funny. So, <laughs> so the, the, you know, we're we're both hoping to get back to because yeah, we practice totally. a lot. It, we yeah, that would be, that would be that would, we had fun practicing, and it would be certainly be a lot of fun to do that on stage. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about that too. Let's get another question here. Okay, what is this guy saying here? Six 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 EJ, can you tell us about the musical direction of your project with Julie Christmas? Well, it's not a lot of new material. It's mainly her material from the past for this one show. So that's all I can tell you. Yeah, there you go. A couple of new songs. They're cool. Um, how, how did you guys link up and, and become friends? How did the whole thing come about? It's funny. Uh, yeah. I don't even think I asked you that. Oh, um, she didn't. It's really, it's, it's funnier when she tells the story. Um, <laughs> I love Julie, uh, by the way. We're to the, to the world. We're good friends. Um, and we've always wanted to work together. I think we met in 2005. Kailessa was playing a Halloween show. And I knew about Made Out of Babies. Like, they were on my radar. And I was like, oh, I hope she comes to the show because I want to meet her. She rules. And I, I, was, I dressed up as a Carrie that night for Halloween. <laughs> and we played this show. And I had this, like, crazy white dress on and like blood I was just like covered in blood and I was in the bathroom like cleaning off after the show because there was like just blood everywhere and there was no backstage so I was like in the public bathroom like in the sink like washing okay. off of me and changing my clothes <laughs> and, and, and and Julie walks in she's like that was awesome and I'm like oh you're Julie Christmas she's like yeah and we just started talking. <laughs> That's awesome. And I then I think that. we did shows shortly after that. 
interesting. Yeah. Well, it's exciting seeing you guys perform together, even when I'm in the band with you, because I just feel like there's something, there's a cool dynamic between the two of you, and you're also very different from each other, but it works. It's awesome. It's really cool to watch. And I and I hope we can get to it so everyone else can witness it, too. I, so and and it would be rad to do at Vitus. We, there, there was definitely talks of, about that. So we'll see. We shall see. We're all, everyone's living in mystery right now, but we all want to get back yeah, to it. I can't really plan for, it's, it's totally weird. You can't make too many plans. Yes. Let me, uh, let me, well, since we have 10 minutes left, um, cool. one of the questions I like to uh, talk about towards the end of the episodes, which, um, with, which the other hosts have been picking up on and doing, here, here it is. It, we're in the pandemic, obviously. We want to get out of it ASAP, but let's, Let's say we're stuck and we only have five records that we get to keep. No, oh, one of these. Uh, okay. What are, what are those five records and why? <laughs> this is like the Desert Island record. Yep, yep, yep. We're, we're going, going there. A million times. Except it's probably different each time. Uh, <laughs> because now, if I could only have five records... It would be, okay, I'm just going to, without too much thought, um, maybe The Cure, 17 Seconds. Um, uh, Willie Nelson, uh, was it Stardust? Yeah. Okay. That, that's, it's, it's, it's. It's like a personal thing. Um, um, hey, Willie Nelson rules. So I got nothing, yeah. And I got yeah. nothing wrong with Willie Nelson. Uh, <laughs> That's a legend. Teenage fan club, man made. Fucking great record, man. It's so good. So good. Yeah. Um, uh, probably can future days. Okay. And how many is that? <laughs> That's four. You got one more left. Um, I probably need something aggressive in there. Uh, maybe Bolt Thrower, Realm of Chaos. Oh, that's a heavy one, huh? Yeah. Nice. I love that. That's cool. I think we, we got to start making playlists. From yeah. The to promote i'm gonna, I'm gonna I know talk Sabbath, but I, I i i i can i know all the sabbath songs so well i can just hear them in my head without actually listening to sabbath yeah um well that that's a great list i love that list and and all the music that you talked about that you were influenced by um really helps us understand kind of the colors that you paint in your music you know i didn't really get into which is um we talked about guitar playing a lot but we didn't really talk about your favorite vocalists. And that's something I, I'm curious about. Like, who were some of the uh, most inspiring vocalists, whether it was lyrically, the way they sang, that you kind of uh, took inspiration from? Man, you know, it's like when, when people ask me about guitar players and, and stuff, it's, it's, it's easier for me to answer that question. It's much harder for me to answer the vocalist question. Okay, okay. Um, because I, just kind of went for it and i wasn't really sure what kind of range i had i wasn't really sure what i would sound like if i would sound like a dying cat or <laughs> like a beast or, <laughs> or too girly or not too girly or i had no idea um i mean i always loved black I always love Debbie Harry, even though like I, I don't sound like her at all. I always just loved her approach. Um, I always loved Nick Blinko, Bruno Mary Peni. Um, I don't know. They're not a ton of vocalists that I'm like. A ton that I like, but maybe not super, not not many that I study, if any. Yeah. Well, well, uh, let's go with guitar players then. What were what were some of the? I'm uh, obviously Tony Iommi, probably. And yeah, he was he was huge. Um, yeah. 
big influence. Um, definitely took me eye on me. Um, Greg Ginn from Black Flag. Yeah. Big influence early on. Um, Probably especially that uh, middle era Black Flag stuff like My War and Slip It In, all that. You know. I mean, I my first tattoo was a Black Flag tattoo when I was 15. Wow, okay. Um, or maybe I was 16. Um, but well, I, I, just, I just played. I had the cassette the first four years. And I had this old Walkman that was my mom's. And I just played that. I would just walk through school with that just blaring in, in my headphones, like all the time. And so, and he, his approach was just so out there. And I, I don't know, Gregan is great, even though- it really was, no one sounded like that back then. No, it's it just sure. super unique. And um, I also really liked um, like the guitar playing from, the, the first the first guitar player for the Damned, okay, nice. and also the guitar player from Magazine, and um, Dwayne Dennison from um, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Um, I mean, there's so many. Every there's so, you know, there's so many. Those are those are that's a great list though, and and like you said, and I'm like, sure I left someone out. Um, oh, King Buzzo, definitely. Right, duh. <laughs> yeah. Fuck okay, yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, before we get going, I, I, I just want to, you know, find out, like, do you have, um, you have the, the release on Friday, which everyone, again, go to Bandcamp, the discussion, to get the, the new release on Friday, pick that up, um, and, um, is there anything else that, uh, you know, I mean, hopefully we'll get out of this soon, but like, do you, did you have any plans uh, with the discussion or anything that you want to let everyone know about or anything to drop? Uh, well, you know. Um, just that I'm putting out the CDEP on vinyl and what I'm going to do, and I'm going to offer a few special additions. Like I'm going to offer um, um, the, uh, the cover photo is a photo I took while on tour, and I'm going to offer as a special edition um, a print of that with a vinyl. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I think that that that'll be pretty cool. And you know, hopefully, I can get this band off the ground and 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 uh, play some shows. We certainly hope so, and you know that you have a place to play here at a uh, yeah. Saint and I see you, Alana. Uh, shout out to. Final Fantasy Brooklyn. When when, yeah. when the, I love yeah. them. That's Hell yeah! Cool. What's up, Alana? When, Alana? when this is over, everybody go over there and buy your favorite records and support. Oh, yeah. I'm also going to be sending them the seven inch and the uh, the LP, the EP. Um, oh shit! There you go. Yeah. So you what you should there. what you should buy from them. But well, yes, <laughs> um, I'm also going to send them a bunch. Yes, there you go. Well, I got now. I have the uh, the counter in front of me that tells me one minute and thirty seconds. Yeah, I see. Uh, I want to. I want to. Thank you so much, man. I want to thank you so much for making time, and and I, I just also want to say how glad I am I got to play music with you, and I hope that we get to do it again. Uh, yeah. Any Good. any last words or shout outs? Uh, thanks to St. Vitus Bar. It's great. It's a great great place, and uh, thank you, Chris, and thanks to all you guys uh, for tuning in. Yes, thanks so much for all the music and for continuing to uh, to bring to bring it. So, um, yeah, well, uh, every everyone, you can follow. What is the uh, discussion socials, real quick? Oh God, my computer went to sleep. Um, it's uh, well, we can follow you. Everyone can follow you, and that's easy. And I think it's underscore the underscore discussion is the Instagram, and. Uh, the band camp, I think it's the discussion official or the official discussion, but, but there's, you can just search that and you'll find it. Yeah. And if you, and if anything wrong, just follow Laura on her Instagram and I'm sure everything. And there's there. links, there's links from, from my page. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Guys, this interview, if you tuned in too late, it's going to be on YouTube tomorrow. So you can watch the whole thing on YouTube. So awesome. Laura, we're getting, we're getting the, the boot. Thank you. And All right, dude.
Stay safe. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. All right, bye. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Have a good